Okay, so my man Dave Habit. First things first, uh, Pittsburgh Wrestling Club coming up next Tuesday. Huge matchup between you and Luke Pletcher. Uh, you and I were just talking. First off, how excited for the match are you, Dave? I'm excited. Uh, the coaches told me that you know they were trying to get me a match before Christmas, and um, I was particularly um, excited about this one, and uh, I was surprised by it too. Um, it's like I found out about it maybe a week ago um and yeah I'm, I'm ready to go it's the main event you know that right it's like the main event i think i i think i thought that i, I got an email from keith gavin saying they didn't know the order yet but then when i saw the card we were the it looked like we were the main event so yeah yeah i'm I excited like about that too i love it i mean it's just and it's you know i love this i love the i love the pa Ohio matchup, you know I love that, right? I mean, and then you guys, you guys flip flop for colleges. But here's the other thing: yeah. you're in the yeah. NCAA finals. I think he's in high school. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that crazy, crazy, Dave? It is. It is crazy. And uh, I mean, what's really been making me think about um, the age gap is, I mean, I've been out of it's. It's we're in 2020 going to 2021. I was in the NCAA finals in 2015, so that's that's how long that was ago. You know, so yeah. That's what's made me think about it. Were you fourth in 2014? Yeah. Fourth in 2014, runner-up in 2015 in overtime, right? Yeah. I remember – here's the thing I remember about that, and this is like I, – I, I love the Dave habit, not matching socks, showing up all late, disheveled, bad head. I missed that from Burnett's. <laughs> but what I really liked about it was um, – well, I didn't like that you lost in the NCAA Finals. I know you obviously didn't either. But you did, we did an interview, um, and then you were like, hey, man, I, I got to go because Port's up. And you, right. you went and you warmed Port up after you lost in the NCAA Finals. How right. hard was that, man? That says a lot about Dave Habit, I think. Uh, I, you know what? It was easy. Um, it, it was easy, actually. I, I wouldn't say um, – I felt good about it. In, and um, Mitch had a um, – he had a big match coming up as well, and – that just didn't change anything we did. It was easy to do that because, you know, he was my partner for four or five years. You know, I don't know if you count the red shirt year, but, um, you know, I just, I wasn't really trying to feel um, bad about myself. You know, it, it was something that I was in control over like my wrestling. I wrestled great. I happened to come up on the um, wrong side of it. You know, it does, it does th losing really sucks, but going to warm up with port, if anything, it made me feel better um, for, you know, all the reasons I just said, and maybe it was a distraction on top of that. Like I didn't want to sit around and sulk, you know, the rest of the night. So I knew that I could get Mitch ready. I wanted him to, you know, unfortunately I wanted him to beat Steber, right? Cause you know, I go back with Steber, but I, I wanted to get him ready for that match. And um, I knew he needed me and that's what a good teammate does. So, you know, you're, you're, Senior level career has all been Serbia, right? Slovenia. Slovenia, right? So, so yeah. Serbia is actually so. Micic. Yeah. Devon, your your teammate at Cliff Keen, he's Serbia. Yeah. Right? Right. And you're yeah. Slovenia. You're the only Slovenian to ever medal in Europeans. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah I've broken all the records. Um, now, when Slovenia was Yugoslavia, they had some better representation. Um, I think that uh, Slovenia was um, whatever started or in 1991. So, so as far as Yugoslavia goes, I think they have more credentials, but as far as Slovenia goes freestyle, I've definitely broken every record. I think, you know, that I've, I've broken like all the records, but they have some Greco Roman wrestling, um, some guys that have been pretty good, but I don't know the history on that. But I think even with, even with Greco Roman, I think I still, Dave Habit is the standard in freestyle and wrestling in Slovenia. Is that, is that a safe statement? I think so. It, you're yeah. it. My you're goal, the guy. My goal was to, to grow it, too. Yeah, my goal was, was to grow it and uh, to get more to, – to grow wrestling in Slovenia. And it's, uh, it's definitely an uphill battle, but I'd still like to see that happen. What is the family lineage uh, as far as uh, the Habits in Slovenia – and what is your family lineage and how are you able to qualify where it's like Dom, Dom is Lebanon, right? Abinator's Lebanon, Lebanon, Stevan is uh, 
Serbia, right? Right. Yeah. And, and then, um, geez, uh, uh, Amin is, uh, there's San, San, Mar- Mar- San, San Marino. That one's a tough one to say. Yeah, yeah San, San Marino. Marino. Right. So it's like, you guys are really obviously very international, international at Cliff Keen, but what's your family lineage with Slovenia? My mom's 100% Slovenian. Um, the way, the, how you get citizenship with Slovenia, Slovenia is, um, if your grandparents were born there, um, my grandma was pregnant with my mom. Uh, my mom's the first kid. They moved here. So my mom was actually born in America, but her first language is Slovenian. Um, and my mom's whole family stayed in Slovenia. So my mom's entire family is still in Slovenia. Uh, so we have a lot of family there. Um, my dad's also uh, 50%, like his dad is 100% Slovenian. Um, and then his mom's none. So I'm 75% Slovenian. Um, and yeah, I just remember when we were little kids, we were going to Slovenia all the time before I even started wrestling. And I used to go to Slovenian school on the East side of Cleveland. And, uh, I remember like, uh, we had citizenship then like my mom's aunt, um, she, so my great aunt, she got us citizenship and I've always had it since then. And, you know, that's the lineage. So I, even outside of wrestling, I had always, um, thought of, you know, I've always known that I could live in Slovenia or I'm a citizen of Slovenia. So, yeah. I think your world, your first world was Vegas worlds 2015, if I'm not wrong. Correct. And Flynn was coaching you. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, he was wearing this gear and it was so weird to me. I was like, what is that gear is so weird. Wearing to me. Jumpsuit. Yes. The jumpsuit. Yeah. He looked like all the Russian dudes and the other uh, former Eastern Block, Right. Uh, you yeah. know, you look at, you, man, you've wrestled everybody at 65 or 66 kilos right right or wait yeah. has it always been 66 for you it's always been 65 65 uh, that's been nice meant. right <laughs> yeah wow yeah. wow i mean you've wrestled every did you wrestle brent metcalf at the worlds one year i didn't wrestle him at the worlds i did i wrestled him you know at the olympic training center but i didn't uh I, no, I wrestled Zane at the Worlds. The That's one who it was. It was Zane. I knew yeah. he was an American. And then uh, in Vegas, I think you wrestled the Iranian, right? It was uh, I, I, Iran. He yeah. Was like the, he was ranked number one at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. I knew it. Oh, it was crazy. And I was just – the jumpsuit had me all thrown off. And I was like, how are you even, you know <laughs> – Because I, I asked you, and I was like, you, you didn't speak it then. Now you speak now, right? What, Slovenian? Yeah, you speak some Slovenian now, a little bit, right? I speak some. You know what? I was doing a really good job. And the, the problem is, is um, they speak English. So I was going over to Slovenia. Um, I, since I've been wrestling, I've been over there maybe five times and, uh, and, and for a good duration too. But like, yeah, they speak English and they, and they want to practice English. You know, what they were explaining to me is that uh, – English is a pretty universal language. Like if you're, you know, if you're doing business, like, you know, and that's what a lot of people are trying to do. If you're trying to do any kind of business or anything and you're talking to somebody from Germany, the easiest way to talk to them is going to be English, you know, and that's for most of those countries. So they like practicing English. And so I was, and then also there's different dialects in Slovenia too. So I like downloaded an app and I was practicing it. It was like Rosetta Stone, but like, some of the some of the words in Slovenia are German, and then there's different parts that have, like French fries has like three. Di- there's three different ways to say it, and the one that I kept practicing, nobody even understood it. It was like, Oservert Crump here, and they just say palm free instead. And uh, so it took me a while to even figure that out. But anyway, I kind of, I kind of back. I, I do know some Slovenian, but um, they just speak English, so I'm like, what the heck? It it, it works, you know. So I just need to know enough, I think. Yeah, and, and the thing about it, like we're saying, English is the universal language. You go to China yeah. and you're doing any type of business, and if they don't have someone that speaks English there, you're, they're going to find someone pretty quick because there's a lot of dollars, right? Yeah. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of international currency is being exchanged, and this is the language. You know, we have the, most, we have the biggest economy on the planet, right? And, and, right. Or, or uh, maybe we're about to get overtaken, but – you look at it, it's, there's a lot of money and, and fairly easy language and they're teaching it dual to them at a young age, right? Yeah. 
and I one thing that I've appreciated or just took notice of um, traveling wrestling is is if I weren't American and if I didn't speak English, like let's let's say if um, you know I don't know I was Korean and I didn't know English, um, I feel like I'd be very uncomfortable just traveling because it's like you go to you go to the German airport, you go to Frankfurt airport, like they have English. Um, it'll say bathroom and the bathroom's universal, but they'll you, you can get by with English, you know, and I was just thinking, I was like, man, if you, if you don't know English and I don't know, you're from Asia or something like, I, I don't know, you, you'd, you'd be very confused, you know, like, and me and Andy Rovat, we went to South Korea the one time and they had less, we were, we were in downtown. They had less, um, you know, English, uh, I keep forgetting. I keep wanting to say subtitles, but, uh, translation. Um, and yeah, it's just a bunch of symbols. Like I, you can't even try to guess what, anything means so yeah so crazy. <laughs> so crazy man to think about yeah and i went to russia we did the russian nationals joe williams and i did and not a lot of people speak english in russia if you've been it's to russia it's crazy. yeah i couldn't believe it like and like what i found like if you're in western europe all the younger if anybody's under 50 they're usually speaking some type of English. And the big thing yeah. I found was like, if you try some phrases, try like three or four phrases in their language, normally they'll figure it out and then they'll like, they'll talk to you. Right. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. Like don't go over and be a quote unquote ugly American. And right. if you try, most people will speak English to you. Like you're saying, you know, when you look at Slovenia, they're, they're, most everybody's speaking English and they want to practice when they talk to you. Right, Dave? Yeah. It's just crazy that when we went to Russia, nobody spoke English. I couldn't believe it. It was, I, I was like, wow. Yeah. It's, Cause you're, yeah. you're, but if it, I had Joe with me and we could talk about everything and joke back and forth. Uh, what's crazy is I saw your coach, your coach was in Kazan in 2009. Yeah. I saw him yeah. in the shopping mall that was like right at caddy corner to the arena. But here's the sad thing, Dave. It could have been Anatoly. Oh, <laughs> you'll never know. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, you probably tell them apart. I can't, right? I I guess I can tell them apart. I mean, I don't, you know, I haven't seen Anatoly a whole lot, but I don't know. I mean, I've been around Sergey so much that I think if I talked to, if if I had to tell them apart by talking, I think I could tell right away. But just looking at them, they're identical. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Uh yeah. who are you bringing to the Pittsburgh Wrestling Club? Who's going to coach you? Is it Trella? Sean. Sergey's coming. Sergey's My guy, coming. Sergey's coming. Yeah. Nice. Uh, when you guys get in, because it's going to be like open earlier on and you guys can get, I don't know, what, what's your weight, by the way? What's your weight cut? What do you have to we're do? Getting, to, 150? Uh, no, it's going to be two kilos, so 147.7. 147.7, yeah. okay. Might as well just say 148. But. What are you right now, Dave? What do you walk around at? I've been weighing, um, I've been weighing 10 pounds over, maybe a little more. So... That's not bad. No, not bad. What's that? Um, a workout and a half for you? A workout in a sauna? What is what is ten pounds to you? I just yeah, I've been pounding water, so um, I've been pounding water, so yeah, it's probably it's probably two workouts. Um, and uh, yeah, I just as as once I start, you know, eliminating the water, the the weight just kind of flies off, you know. But right now it's like I'm losing a lot of water in practice but then i'm drinking a lot anyway so um you, like the you know you'll be higher on the scale but you'll feel a lot better and then like i said when you at, at some point everybody has to stop drinking the water at least for the day of and um i'll just have a lot more water water in my body to lose so what's that weigh-in dave is it a, is it a, a five hour or two hour what are they doing with the weigh-in do you know it's, what the weigh-in is yet it's officially a two hour weigh-in, but if I'm the main event, then it, you know, three hours. Uh, well, yeah. So the event's supposed to be around two hours, right? So from like six to right. Um, so, I mean, I should be wrestling about three and a half hours later. I think. I think you'll be recovered. Is like, is it been like a good, yeah, yeah, like a good training cycle for it? And I know that you know it's only ten days old, right? You just got it last week sometime. So you're yeah. ten ten days into this. Normally, a training cycle. I'm guessing for for euros or feral or any of that stuff you're going to is going to be, and then the, the world is going to be different and euros is going to be different than something like this. But how do you feel in the training cycle? And, and is this just something where you're essentially a professional athlete? This is what you do for a living. 
do you ever just not stop training? No, that's been the biggest thing I'd say from, um, I mean, e even, even college, I look, I called the off season, the off season. Um, and obviously in college, I mean, you know, we learned at a younger age to, you know, you get better in the off season, but you call it the off season. There's no off season really anymore. I, I've just been training year round and there's been a lot of positive to it. And I don't want to say there's been a lot of negative, but it's, it's, it's harder in a way. Um, you know, you don't have the grind of the college season, but you're just constantly training all year round. And, and I guess COVID would be a good example. It's like, we got back to training and thank God we have these events that we can go to because if we didn't, we'd still be training anyway. Right. Like if, if there was no, if I wasn't wrestling on the 22nd, I I'm still showing up to practice every day. And what makes it hard is I'm not just wrestling, you know, some average Joe at Walmart, like, you know, I'm, I'm wrestling Pantaleo every day or I'm wrestling Canaan store or Mal Malakamine or, you know, I've been wrestling Bajrang lately every day. And it's, you know, it gets harder as you get older and these guys wrestling, they're not just, they're not regular people, you know, they're so, um, but yeah, there's, it's just a year round and yeah, I do feel like a professional athlete and yeah, like I said, there's a lot of positives to it and I wouldn't say negatives, but there's things about it that, that are challenging at times. Bajrang, I just saw you in a picture of you and him at Bana. I believe it was Bana, but wherever you guys were. Uh, and then I watched someone broke down you hitting the head outside on him. Did you see that? The craziest thing about that, that thing is I watch those videos all the time. It's DPS breakdown. I've been watching those videos for a year because I was like, it is insane how well this guy breaks down these videos. Like he'll, he has really like, he good, listens. dude. It's he really good. San, he went to San Ignatius and I wrestled. Are him. you serious? Yes. Who I, is it? I had no What's idea. his name? His name is Dan Sweeney. Yeah. Yeah. He you, broke down how, uh, uh, Punia kept your, Bajoran kept your hand. Broke you couldn't cut, you couldn't, you couldn't cut Beneath across, control. right? You yeah. couldn't cut across. That was right. wild. And he did such a good job. He was so diligent about keeping it, which is really hard to do whenever you guys are jockeying for position and you're moving yeah. and you can feel you working up the leg and trying to cut across. He was like super, he was so patient with it. I can't believe he didn't score. I know. I oh always, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, it always bothered me that I didn't, that I didn't score on those ankle picks because they were obviously beautiful ankle picks. Go back to the San Ignatius days when I was hitting ankle picks left and right. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like a match that I felt like I could have won. And especially if I just convert on those takedowns, I win. Now that I've been wrestling him every day, I'm a little less hard on myself because he's very, very hard to score on. Um, even if you watch matches, he always does give up a takedown here and there, but you really like it's it's difficult it's kind of hard to explain but it's something that you can see or just feel but he's really balanced um he's really flexible he's and got he's a really motor we know position. that he's got a motor he's got a motor so like I, I ankle picked him at practice a couple of times I've scored on him but he's also gotten out of so many takedowns that on anybody else it's a takedown um so it's it but that's making me better because if I just if I keep if I keep progressing through that I'm gonna score but yeah he he adds a new challenge to uh, finishing takedowns. How's his English? How's Bodring's English? It's good, but we don't talk that much. You know, it's funny because Christina will always ask me, uh, and maybe this is just me. That def other guys may be social, but I usually just show up to practice, especially if I'm showing up five minutes late. You know, if, <laughs> you know if I'm showing up five minutes late, I don't get enough time to. Uh, socialize so usually i just i i go in and um i am a social guy but when it comes to practice i i don't talk that much i i show up and um i'm just focused and then we practice and then if there's any time that we'll talk it's after and i'm usually doing a little extra cardio and i'm usually running out the door and other guys will, but any, anyway to answer your question um he speaks good english um i'd say average and uh, he understands it pretty well he understands it pretty well and um but he's we haven't talked a whole bunch but i can but i can talk to him um and i can understand him pretty well so it's good it's definitely good enough he's in the flow eight man right yeah what was the thing with the flow eight man did they what, what's your deal with the flow eight man did you well i think he would man i i don't know the timeline but i, I don't know the exact timeline but i think i i think that 
um, he was in the eight man. I mean, obviously they've been talking to Bajrang probably for a while. They obviously didn't message him a week ago and he came up here, but I knew about the eight man, I think before I knew about, um, the cliff keen so i don't i don't know exactly how that i mean the way that i know it played out is he probably knew he was going to be in the eight man he knew he was going to be wrestling on the 22nd and so since he's over here um somehow they were able to set set it up that he'd train here i didn't even i didn't even ask about it i was just what about you and the eight man though is what i'm asking was there any talk of you i I messaged i i i messaged um bader and, and piles i said i want in you and know, then but it just never happened. It just didn't happen. You okay. know, I, I think, you know what, like, again, like, so Bajrang, like, obviously they didn't set that up. Um, like, like they may have already had, and I don't know, they may have already had eight guys picked out before they even announced the bracket. Who knows? You know, yeah, but that's true. yeah, I did try. I did try. Cause a, um, it's an exciting event. I think everybody's fired up about it. And then, B, I mean, I like money, so <laughs> if I can make, if I can win twenty five thousand dollars, I don't even know what I would do with it, but I'd love to have twenty five thousand dollars or or anything. You know, you, in wrestling, it, it's it's also exciting that you know we're getting paid um, to wrestle. Um, I've been wrestling uh, for free my whole life, so you know the goal is always to use wrestling to get um, to to go to college and make get a scholarship and everything. But getting paid actual money, I mean, it's the easiest money you can make, I think. Because you could you could ask those eight guys to wrestle in a in a tournament and they'd probably do it. So yeah, throw some money in there. Now you got guys really excited. Dave, Dave, if you do what you love, you'll never do, you'll never work a day in your life. Right. Is that how you feel about it? You know, is that is that, is that like essentially what you're saying? Yeah, I and I really love coaching too. So I guess you know I've been I been competing for the past well on the senior level for. Uh, going on six years and then I don't know what happens but if you stay around wrestling too long and you start hanging around the rooms and you know you start getting pulled into coaching and um so I've been working with some kids um and we live down in Dundee Michigan and um I always tell Christina like that's it's not work for me at all and usually I end up in a better mood like so if it's an off day let's just say it's like Sunday and it's an off day like Sundays are like not as good as like Mondays. Like I'll do practice. I'll go to, I'll go train the kids. And um, I don't know how else to say that better train the kids, but yeah, I'll go train some high school kids and I'm in a better mood than, you know, when I left. So statement's a hundred percent true. So, you know, you're training for Pletcher and you just found out, you know, not that long ago, but you know, we got to talk about uh, Bajrang, but let's talk about Luke Pletcher and let's talk about, the body style for Pletcher is the closest thing similar to Dave Habit. He's not very tall, right? Yeah. You're not a tall guy. And but he I think he might even be lower than you. Okay. So there's gonna be some some difficulties to to get there. Um the hips are obviously very powerful when we talk Pletcher. Pletcher Fletcher's powerful, man. He's compact and he's powerful. When you look at the the, the match, uh what's your what's your kind of mindset going into it and what, what do you want to get out of a match with, with Luke Pletcher? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so yeah, when, you know, I've, I've been watching the guy for years and I, I I'm thinking he's got to be shorter than me. Um, I, I'm just thinking he's got to be shorter than me. Uh, his legs are, are particularly short and compact. Um, so, you know, just from what I've watched over the years, you know, he's, he's very difficult to, to get in on and then you, and then I mean I, that's how I would train somebody uh if I was trying to help you with defenses first you don't let the guy in on your legs but then if they happen to get in on your legs um you got good hips then if they happen to get past that you can scramble so he can do all that stuff so you know he br- he brings a uh, a fun challenge to where getting to the legs is is not going to be a cakewalk and then if you get in deep he he's got all kinds of you know, he's got the rubber knees and he, he wrestles through the positions very well. So, um, and then obviously he has, he has his good leg attacks too. So you got to stay in a low stance. Um, I feel like, uh, if I can get to his legs, I'm pretty dangerous. Um, so that's my big focus is like, if I can get to his legs, I feel, um, <clears throat> I feel pretty comfortable with anybody that I can, I can take you down. Um, you know, I like to scramble too, and I know the positions very well. And, uh, I'm familiar with most scrambling positions, but also if you put me in an unfamiliar position, I'm 
pretty good at um, improvising through it anyway. So that's how I feel about it. And I feel like uh, if he shoots on me, um, as long as, as long as I react, um, I mean, this is obvious, but I think if, if my reactions are good, um, I'm going to be fine. You know, and that's, and I can say that pretty much cross work for anybody, but I really like how he wrestles, especially to throw him some credit. I really liked how he wrestled his senior year. Um, he definitely would have been in the NCAA finals. It was between him and Nick Lee, probably, you know, anything could happen. And, um, and then he won at the big tens and I liked that he was putting up a lot of points. You know, I, I'm sure you could agree it was fun. His senior year was very fun to watch. And even in his earlier years when he wasn't lighting up the scoreboard, he was still fun to watch, you know? So, you know, like the, these are really cool promotions. You look at Wisconsin did one last night. Um, there's a tipping feature. Did you see the tipping feature by the way? Yeah. Hopefully we can use that tipping feature for you guys. And um, I don't know how that's going to work with, with our, but it is a rock fin production. And uh, you know, Luke Pletcher, what a great opponent, man. I'm, I'm just fired up about it. But when you look at your RTCs and you look at these events and you look at their, they're putting together, it flows doing stuff with the, with the eight man. They did the, I think the 195 it was, and now they got the yeah. 150 coming up. You're going to be the main event on the Pittsburgh wrestling card. How does this come about to be? Does Gavin call you? Who thinks of this stuff? And, and do you throw your hat in there a lot? How do these, these promotions work for at least on your end, Dave? Well, for, I mean, you know, I'm seeing these guys like Seth Gross, He's very active. He's been wrestling everywhere. Meredith's been wrestling everywhere. If throwing your hats out, out there is what you got to do, then I, I should have been doing more of that. But I guess for me, I was thinking I want to get the training in first. Um, I want to just train in the room. But as far as this event getting put together, uh, um, Bormat brought up, uh, you know, that he'd like to get me a match in before Christmas. I agreed, um, especially because Pantaleo got all the matches at the RTC Cup. Um, were you hurt? He or were, you okay? were you okay? Were you healthy there, by the way? Yeah, I was healthy. Okay. You know, I was just yeah, – I, I was like – because I saw you there, and I was like, I have to was wrestling all the matches. So I'll make sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally good. Okay. Um, and uh, so, uh, um, so, so he was talking to Kale, and then – so literally the story is, is he was talking to Kale. I was expecting, you know, somebody from, uh, from Penn state. I didn't know who though, you know, and, and if you know, I, I think it's official now, you know, Zane's wrestling Bajrang. So, um, so yeah, so I didn't know who it was going to be, but then Josh called me. I was actually at sit go gas station. I remember. And, uh, he was like, like you want to wrestle Pletcher in Pittsburgh? And I was like, yeah, for sure. And I knew about the Pittsburgh event because Shelton Max wrestling in that. I'm pretty good friends with him. And, uh, yeah, it was like right on the spot. He asked me, I said, yeah, perfect. You know? Um, and I was excited about that match. Cause I, I know all the guys that are wrestling in the tournament. I mean, there was like a couple of names I was thinking of that. I was like, it'd be exciting to wrestle, you know, this guy, like, like if I wrestled at Nini Lion wrestling club, like Nick Lee would be an exciting match, you know, but other than him, I don't from Penn state's club. I don't know off the top of my head who is an exciting match for me, but. Anyway, I, I mean, Zane, about... Zane, I'd like to see Russell Zane. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, if, we're, if we're throwing Russell it out Bodring, here, though. We're, we're throwing it out here, right? You know, I get yeah. the, he's got by drink. Yeah. We're throwing it out here. Bryce Meredith. Is that a match you like? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know like whatever it. I'm going to say to you, I think you like all these matches, but if there Pretty were much, guys, yeah. if there were guys, if, if there, give me two or three guys right now, Dave, that who you would wrestle tomorrow. In, in a in a closed room, I know you're Russell anyone, but who would you like to see your name in the marquee of? Because now they're marketing this, right? It's you and Pletcher yeah. marketing, and that's what I like yeah. about it. Uh, we're doing it right now, but when we talk about it, you know, who does Dave have it want to see ultimately? And, and I'm not asking for a call out on that MMA. If you want to be, right. you can. But who does Dave have it really want to wrestle in these events? Yeah, well, I mean. Yeah, they're not call outs. It's like it's a matter of a number of things. Like so Yanni would be one. Um, that's a name. Like if I was looking if I was from the outside looking in, that's like a name that I should have to call out because um what well one, it'd be exciting for the fans. Um we both get in a lot of wrestling positions. Two, he's a serious threat to making the team and a guy that uh, like he's an ultimate competitor. You know, he's one of the best in the world. So the challenge is there um 
the wrestling style is there. I think we'd put up a lot of points. It'd be a good match. Um, so Yanni, be, Yanni, okay, Yanni, got it. Yeah, that that one. I mean, he should be on anybody's list, really. I mean, if you're not if you're not saying his name, then then you're ducking competition. You know, right? I think yeah. if you're not calling out certain names, then you know. So so that one's exciting. Um, obviously, I, I could say Zane. I could say Jordan Oliver. Those matches, um, same exact reasons. I don't know how how exciting. I don't think the matches would be as exciting. You know, I don't know. Like, but those would be good matches. Jordan Oliver, Zane Rutherford, Evan Henderson's always always a fun match, and he's he's really proving himself, especially as of lately. He's on fire, man. Yeah, Evan so, Henderson's on fire. He's on fire. You know, he's he's kind of been the same way since college in the sense of. Uh, I don't know. I'd really give him a chance against anybody. I mean, you see it all the time. He'll, he'll be, he was losing the McKenna like eight or nine zero and he came back and won. It's like, and honestly, when I saw that match or when, I, when that happened, I wasn't like that surprised. It's obviously surprising, but I was, I feel like I've seen him do that so many times, you know, he's, I don't know. He just keeps wrestling and he, he puts together big moves and stuff. So he's always in the match. I love the, the dream matchups. Um, internationally, obviously, I know you want to wrestle uh, Punia again. Whoever Russia fields, I know you probably want to wrestle them. Uh, yeah. Whether it's Baev, Baev's probably going to come down, right? Oh, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's, he's really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you don't I know would... who they're going to send, though, right? Uh, Soslan yeah. Romanov is, is, looks quasi-retired. Um, you know, he's the defending Olympic champion at the weight um i would think i would think rashidov's definitely the guy Rashidov. he just got hurt he just got hurt wrestling but that's my Leah, point but, that's my yeah. point we don't know who they're gonna field you know right. romanov looks like he's coaching right that's what i see out of romanov yeah. up on following social media um Baez obviously i think comes down yeah i think so but because he's 70 he's like the tween he's like the james green tweener right yeah yeah i don't think he'll i don't think he'll ultimately um and I, I think he's super good. I don't think he'll end up being the guy, but I mean, that's the, that's the thing with Russia. They're all super good, but that's why I don't think he would. Uh, that's why I don't think that he would make the team. I, he's got so many guys he'd have to beat. Dude, and if, he's, if he's not, the depth, yeah, if he's not a 65 guy, unreal. the weight classes, the weight classes really matter. It's not just, Hey, I can get my weight down. Um, I think that's like the thought pattern when, you have these like kids coming up with wrestling is like cut weight and you'll win Tulsa nationals. It's like, I don't know. I don't know whether that works or not when you're a kid or whatever, but when you get to be an adult, it's not just a matter of, uh, there are sweet spots in rest. There are sweet spot weight classes. So for example, 64 kilograms would, it's only two more pounds, but for me, I wouldn't like that. You know what I mean? So, and for some guys, you know, if you're a 141 pounder in, in college, that might be exactly your weight class. And, and again, it sounds ridiculous that I'm only talking about two pounds, but all, all the wrestlers know, you know, there are, there are sweet spots in wrestling. And so anyway, for that Bay of guy, if, if you were truly the best guy in the world at 65, like if he made the team, then he, then he'd probably already be doing that. If he has to overextend himself to get there, he'll probably be a super good wrestler, but probably to make the team, it's probably a lot, you know, I mean, just the depth, Dave, when we went in 2009, uh, Albert yeah. Saritov, he's 84 kilos. He beat Kale when Kale came out of retirement. He beat Kale in the bronze medal match, right? Yeah. When we went, he got beat in the finals. He got beat in the finals. What's crazy is he's got a lot of these guys defect. Saritov uh, was a bronze medalist in the 2016 Olympics. He lost to Snyder. He's a big, tall dude. He's six foot four, six foot five. He lost to uh, Gadisov in the finals. Yeah. And then uh, Jizo Pete's another guy, uh, another defect, defector, multi time world medalist. He got beat by uh, Gatsalov in the finals. Yeah. I'm like, dude, it's like insane. Yeah. Um, the guy who Logan beat at the world championships, uh, I can't, uh, Ahmed Chikayev. Him, Chikaya, yeah, he was a kid. He was like a teenager, and he took Besikudikov down 
Oh, dude, it was amazing. Yeah. It turned into like a war and Kudakov housed him. But like to see that stuff when, you know, uh, Kadisov was young. Kadisov was a, a 19, 18 or 19 and he won Russian nationals. It was crazy to watch all this stuff. And the depth is just like, it's insane. Is when you guys went in 2009 and everything, is that like that? It's like pretty much a viral video of like Russian wrestling and it's all these crazy scrambles. Is that, was that the same year? That is one of them. That's one that, okay. that Joe made. Joe made and cut that up. Yeah, that's because he made one every year, Joe, because Joe went every yeah. year. Dude, that was yeah. a, I'm going to tell you this right now. I would never do that again. That was a frightening, <laughs> horrible thing. I'd never do it again. We went just two, just two dudes, two American dudes went and like it was just, it's, it epitomizes what that company was like built on. Just like adventurous, yeah. go figure it out, learn as you go. That and, that and I just, I would never do that again in Russia. Dude, we didn't have credentials, Dave. Oh my we God. We filmed on <laughs> top of a walkway we, and we filmed every match. So it was wild. Uh, tell me your path to, to Tokyo 2021, Dave, to, to get to qualify for 2021. What did you do? What do you got to do? What, 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 where are you right now? So the world championships already happened. Um, and a lot of people get confused. So the world championships that are going on don't count towards the Olympics. It was the past world championships. So I lost the buzz ring there. You know, that opportunity is gone. I didn't um, qualify there. Because it's top five. Top five at the Worlds, yes? Yeah, which is ultimately six, right? Because there's yeah, two yeah, thirds yeah, yeah. and two thirds. Yes. Yeah. So six guys go from the world championships then they do the continents and they take two each so you have to make the finals and then there's the last chance qualifier and i keep confusing myself on it but i think it's the i think it's the top two again so you get yeah they, you get that's, what the, that's what it was in 2012 and 2016 at least yeah where are you where are you what what do you got so, you gotta do continentals? So I, I yeah i'm at the continentals that'll be um i don't know the exact date but it's uh i think it's in late late march where at, I think. Late, Dave, where at in budapest in budapest so in hungary okay and then yeah. now, now dave i understand you're an optimistic guy Budapest. you're yeah. an optimistic guy do you know where the last chance is i think it's in bulgaria bulgaria okay so yeah would you stay over would you stay over will you come back it's a good question i Depends think there's i think i think there's a good amount of time in between them that uh and you know now that i have the, the family um it would be worth it. Like, I, th I think I, yeah, I don't know the exact dates, but you know, if, if it were a couple of weeks, if it were like two weeks, I'd just stay. Um, you really just don't want to go back. But so that depends then. I, I guess I don't know the exact timeline, but I think it's longer than that. I think it's like maybe four to six weeks. Um, I don't know. I'd rather go home for two weeks and, and you, you'll still get acclimated and everything. Um, yeah. Which takes me to the next thing that I want to talk about. And I want you to actually talk about uh, yeah. the family, man, having a family, having a, you know, being a father, father of two, you got a boy, you got a girl and a, and a boy, right. Baby boy. How old your daughter? Yeah. Three? No, no. She's turning two in February. Turning two. So they're real close. Yeah. They're really close. What's the, what's the spacing? It's 18 months, 18 months. Uh, almost exactly. Yeah. So it's what my kids are 20. My two sons are 20. Dave, tell me about being a dad. Tell me about – listen, I never thought that the five-minute late guy with two mismatched yeah. socks, all the shovel, bedhead, who rolled into Burnett trained, and then war, went to war and scrapped. I just I, – it's I feel so old thinking about it now, too. And we had you at all those camps with Burnett's. It was awesome. But what's it like being a dad now, Dave? Hey, just because we keep talking about – when you talk about the Burnett camps, one time – and I forget who – I think it was Simon Kitsis, maybe. But, you know – just to epitomize what you're talking about, um, I actually overslept the mo the morning run. If you remember, I think you were the one that I, I think we had to run you. with. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> what did we do so, to you, Dave? What did I make you do? I I forget, but I remember sleeping in, and and uh, that pretty much just ep epitomizes everything. And I think Simon Kitts was the other person. But I made you guys yeah. run with dumbbells down yeah. this country. I ran with you, I think. I can't. I, I remember. Used to run with I remember you guys. I remember we still had to run and, and we would have been better off just waking up and running with on time. That's, that's all I can remember. It was Dave. That's the point. That's the point of the punishment. Yeah. That is the point of everything. It's not yeah. just arbitrary and made up Dave. It, that is literally right. the point of me making you carry <laughs> dumbbells on a run with kids. 
That is why you right. had to do that, Dave. And that was the right. old barn. That was the old barn, and that was the first that was, camp. Yeah, that was pie crafts, we took right? all the yes, all at Piecrafts, mm -hmm. we took yeah. all the weights and put them somewhere, like in one of Jim Piecrafts' barns. And you guys overslept in that weight room, which was we covered with mats, so Eric could get two more groups in. Because I yeah. listen, I just text that guy today. Do they make them better than Eric Burnett? No, no. I, I always preach um, that you know he was. They're the best coaches, and I would say him and Scotty. I'm, I was trained more by Eric, but Scotty came around. I think when I was in high school, but yeah, they're the best coaches in Ohio. Um, I mean, I, that's I, I I don't well. I guess I'm speaking to people who wouldn't know, but yeah, all the good wrestlers from Cleveland. You know, they represent different schools, but we all are Burnett trained. Um, and even the kids that I'm training here in Dundee, Michigan, they all go to. They I think they mostly go to Scotty. Because he's closer, um, yeah, he's he's closer. They, they do some yeah. Eric training too, but they're more. Yeah, yeah. Scotty, you're right. Yeah, it's the Wodarskis are just nails, bro. So I, yeah. look out for those guys in college. One yeah. guy's going to college uh, up where I teach in uh, Painesville, Lake Erie. Yeah, Paintsville, he's going to Lake yeah. Erie. That's a mile from my high school where I teach. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm familiar with Paintsville. Dad. Yeah, talk yeah. dad life. Talk this dad life. Talk, you know, a boy and a girl. You got a little little. How old's the little guy? How old is he? He's three months. Wow, he's a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's awesome. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Parenthood. Um, I mean, it's the greatest thing ever. Um, you know, I wanted to be a dad. Um, it's even. I, I'm sure everybody says it, but it's way better than. Um, it's really hard to describe, but you know, I I love the kids, and um, they're good kids, and I mean, you know, the thing is, is it's uh it's, it's hard too at the same time. Um, and especially cause they're both so young. Um, I mean, I could just give you a bunch of stories, but when you have Kennedy who's running around and she's out of control and she's just throwing stuff on the floor, but then you have the newborn Maverick and, and he like, you have to hold him and she's, she's fighting. She'll fight me, you know, like she'll take something and I'll try to take it back from her and we're, we're over here fighting over it but i'm trying to deal with maverick at the same time so um i mean it's been all love here and i mean i've loved every second of it um it's you know even though 2020 has been um i don't know an awful year i'll call it um i mostly see a lot of positive out it out of it and you know my son being born is what i'll remember the most out of this year and it was insane just and the way he was born was insane too that's worth a storytelling real quick but it was like in the middle of the night um 3 a.m my wife was like um hey like i don't know i'm not feeling good or whatever and you know i went back to bed like she she just didn't really say like you need to get up and we need to do something like she was trying to she was trying to tough it out and then she woke me up at 5 a.m and was like we need to go right now so we had to drive up to ann arbor to michigan hospital and it's just like what you see in the movies like she could have had the baby in the car. We were, we're speeding all the way up to Michigan hospital. Um, and I had to bring Kennedy and during COVID, like it's, it's a nightmare. You know, they told, they told me that I wasn't going to be able to, uh, to that Kennedy wasn't going to be allowed to be there at all. And I thought I was going to miss everything. I, I didn't know Christina was having the baby, but I thought she was probably having the baby. So we get to valet, they send her up right away. And then I start talking to the front counter and they let me go up and it's like, five minutes later and I missed the birth. Oh. <laughs> so it was that quick. And they said if his hand wasn't in the way that he would have been born like in the car. Or oh sooner. my goodness. Oh, yeah. Wow, Dave. Wow. Yeah. But you know what? That's a little bit of Dave habit being Dave habit, not really getting the, 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 Hey, maybe we should go now. No, I don't, I don't because when she said at five, we need to go. So this time it wasn't on me because I would say it was more on Mrs. Habit. Because she would have been like, hey, we got to go. Like, she, you would have done yeah. it. I, I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. That's not this, what I'm this saying. Is the, this is what she said exactly. So you tell me how you'd interpret it. But she, she wakes me up at 3 in the morning, and she goes, hey, you know, I have a – you know, you know, Braxton Hicks, it's like, it's like, it's like contract, yeah, it's uh, contractions. Yeah. 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 And she said, I think I have Braxton Hicks. And I don't even know what that really is. I know I what it it's is. A but fall, it's a false labor pain, I want yeah, to say. Yeah, it feels like you're going through labor. Yeah. 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 I'm and, not a doctor. So she, Social studies teacher. Yeah. Disclosure. Yeah. So she said So she said that she was having Braxton Hicks at 3 in the morning. So I'm barely up. 
And then she said like, well, hey, I have a doctor's appointment at 8 a.m. Should I, should I wait it out? And I'm like, and then she said, oh, I called the doctors and they said to go, like, she just was like talking, but like, those were the things she told me. She didn't say, I think I'm having a baby. And then she, she was kind of downplaying. She's like, I have Braxton Hicks. They said I can wait it out. The appointment's at eight o'clock. So I was like, okay, then we'll just wait till eight o'clock. I'll, I'll be up. But then she woke me up again. And it was, it was a different tone. It was like, get up, we're going. And then, then I, I answered the call then, you know, so He's that, got maybe that a little, not on me for once. Maybe a little too much Ohio River Valley toughness in her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Dude, those folks are tough over there, right? Yeah. She, Where's she from? Indian, Indian, what's it Creek. called? Indian Creek, yeah. directly next to Steubenville. Yeah. If you wouldn't know, if there weren't signs up, you wouldn't know when you're out of Steubenville, Indian, Indian you wouldn't know the difference. You're exactly right. It's crazy. I was like, been there, hey, huh? that's another place. Do you remember yeah. the weekend you got married? I tried to, I was like, hey man, come to this Schmitty thing. You're like, oh yeah, I'm kind of busy. You were at <laughs> rehearsal dinner. I felt like such an idiot. I was like, no, that's fine. Sorry about that, by the way. My bad. Oh, my bad no. on that one, by the way, Dave. I shouldn't have tried to. I think I was overwhelmed. Wedding. I barely remember. I was like overwhelmed, I think, but, but okay. yeah. Okay, last thing. You were in one of the top RTCs uh, in the world. It's not even the United States of America. It's the world. You're at one of the best facilities in the world in the Bonner Center. You're at one of the top educational institutions in the world in the University of Michigan. Tell me about going to that RTC. Uh, Coach Bournemouth, obviously you started and Joe McFarland was the head coach. Now Sean Bournemouth's the head coach. Uh, the Chirellas are obviously huge and instrumental. Uh, Kellen Russell's there. You guys have just an incredible staff. Balaglazov, Andy was there for some of the time. Jake Herbert was there for some of the time. What's it been like at Cliff Keen and, and, and what's your favorite thing about that coaching staff and, and that facility and everything you're doing there in Ann Arbor, Dave? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you. I mean, I feel, I feel like I don't have to say much, but uh, that's the whole reason why I came, came here to Michigan, um, because it is, it's world class, everything, and just, I mean, it, like, pretty quickly, um, into, into being here, like, yeah, being when you surround yourself in a good environment, I think it's preached a lot, but it's true. When you surround yourself in a good environment, uh, your standards get raised, you know. So when you are in the best one of the best RTCs in the world, you, your standard is to be a world champion and everything that comes with that, the way that you train and the way that you prepare, um, like the standards have been raised, you know, dramatically. And, and a lot, and I got a lot of, of that from Edinburgh too, but yeah, it's been an amazing experience. And yeah, I like the one thing I mentioned it earlier is yeah. Like the wrestling every day is, is tough, you know, um, with, you know, with this tough RTC, I mean, I'm, I'm wrestling Pantaleo and Malik and stuff every day. And what happens is when you wrestle these guys every day, you don't, you know, you're not like looking up to them or something. It's like, it's, it, it's like you're wrestling an average guy. But the problem is, is now someone that you're used to training with or wrestling with, um, they're not average at all. Like we'll go, we'll go lift. We go to this lift. Um, another thing it's Barwis methods. It's a big part of our success, but, uh, you know, we'll go lift there and I'm like squatting a lot of weight or I'm doing something impressive. And then I look over and Pintelio's doing it even better. Um, so that's kind of part of it. And then you get used to, you get used to seeing that every day and, and it normalizes it one. And then two, it raises your, if you want to be the best, you know, like one, one way to be the best, I think is put yourself in the best room and try to be the best in that room, you know? So if, if you want to be the best wrestler in the world, maybe go to Russia and try to beat all of them. And you're a, able to do that then there's no doubt where, where you are. So it's, it's been an amazing experience. Um, I've never left here. You know, I, I came here back in 2015 and I've been here the whole time and, and I'm going to retire here. So that it speaks volumes to um, what I think of, what I think of the program here and, and my happiness with it. Okay. I'm going to find the, the screen here real quick. I'm going to slide this over here. Ready? We've got Edinburgh over here on the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't even keep it on the spectrum over here. <laughs> you got the University of Michigan. And I think the big thing about Edinburgh, and you know, you know me, I cover Edinburgh for a decade, man. Love the yeah. place. I just love there. I love going there. I love the bagel place. The, I love the Wildwood pizza. I love, I love the little downtown. I love it. It's gritty. The snow's up to your waist. 
it's a high school type gym that's a small gritty basement room it's just it's it is blue collar as it gets matt hills there now flynn did a great job with it the fundraising everything they do it's yeah. just the opposite end of the spectrum as the university of michigan would you agree with that a thousand percent and i've experienced it <laughs> crazy so, dude yeah and and remember i can't i you know i was born and raised in cleveland not even a suburb like my west address park. is technically cleveland west, west park west side of west park hold on west side of west park i'm not sure i i was that's always I the was, joke that's the joke with oh, charlie oh. agazino and guy seiko they're for oh, west side of west park because i think a lot of the firemen and the police officers lived on the west side of west park and i think namath my buddy Nick Namath, Dolph Ziggler, he's west side of West Park. And that's I always know like they were West Park, by the way. Are they St. Pat's guys? No, uh, Namath went to St. Pat's. Okay. Uh, yeah. Charlie went to St. Pat's. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. So I'm an I'm Our Lady of Angels guy. So Are you? I'm, I'm yeah, a, they're St. Pat's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so crazy, man. Just yeah. a gritty place, though, right, Dave? Yeah. And it, well, and it's, but it's um city. So going from that to um, going to there and going to St. Ignatius to Edinburgh. I mean, that was a major culture shock. And then going back to Michigan, it's funny. You'd think you'd – yeah, it's just been crazy. There's, I've been in a lot of different places. <laughs> no question, man. Yeah. No question. Uh, hey, you got to do me a favor. I got two little more tidbits, and we're going to jump off here. Uh, I need you to watch the Josh Chirella interview post-2012 Olympic trials. I he literally bookmarked ep- it. He literally epitomizes what those people are. Yeah. Love them. Some of the best people you'll ever meet. Uh, please watch it. Awesome interview. It really just shows you who those people are. And, and uh, yeah, that's why I love them. My wife went to Pioneer High School. Did you know that? Pioneer. Pioneer High School. Um, oh, the, Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Across from the big house. Yeah. Yes, that's Sorry. my wife's high school. She's a yeah. Pioneer Pioneer. That's crazy. She's a Pioneer Ray, Ray Pioneer. Von Foley. Ray Von Foley is a Pioneer too, right? Yes. Ray Von Foley is yeah. a Pioneer Pioneer. That's actually correct. And it's not a wrestling school like at all. But – my wife's a pioneer pioneer and she played volleyball at Kent state. What, what does she say? Cause I always thought it was, she probably thought nothing of it, but what, what did she say her experience was like being like it right there? Right. Right. Didn't think anything of it. House. Didn't yeah. know any different. Didn't think anything that, of it. Yeah. I, Cause I remember when I was first in Michigan, I was like, I can't believe there's like a high school, like right, right across the street. Right there. I yeah. tell people that I'm like, my wife's high school is directly next to the big house. They're like, no, I said, get it. You got a smartphone. Get on the Google Maps and look, and they're like, "Oh wow, that's really close." It's super close. It's it so can't close. Be closer. You know, could yeah, no, yeah, and it's like yeah. just a wild thing. And I, Ann Arbor's awesome. My my in laws live there. Uh, my brother in law is the head basketball coach at Belleville, and then yeah. my sister in law is a teacher, uh, early childhood in uh, Ann Arbor Public Schools. So, and then my father in law lives um, in Ann Arbor. So, I'm up there when I'm up there. I try and hook up and hang out. Yeah. And, Check that place out. So, all right. Yeah. Watch the Terrell interview. It's worth it. Um, I'm going to cut this off. We'll talk a little bit to you uh, off camera. Dave, thanks for the time. December 22nd, six o'clock. You're going to be the main event versus Luke Pletcher on Rockfin Live. Do you got any parting shots, anything mean you want to say about Luke Pletcher or anything we need to know about the match? From, from what I see, Luke Pletcher seems like uh, an awesome guy. So, uh, yeah, just good luck to him. I'm looking forward to scrap. And uh want to give a shout-out to the babies once again. I, I would have talked – it's actually good that I didn't talk too much about the babies because I could have – that could have been the whole interview. But, we could have yeah, talked about Maverick and, Maverick and – Kennedy. Kennedy and Maverick. We could have talked – it could be the it, Barbarian Hour on Maverick and Kennedy. We didn't even get yeah. to Pletcher. I, I, told Chris, I told Christina, and when I did the flow for an interview, I told her, I go, I purposely – tried not to talk about them because that's like all I talk about and it, that you won't I'll just keep bringing them up and so I I actually had a mental note like just try to I want to brag about the kids but I just it'll be too much Dave so. hashtag this dad life buddy hashtag yeah. this dad, it's the greatest thing ever we're on it the is. same page Dave all right I'm gonna cu- cut this talk to you a little bit Dave thanks for the time thank you